most writers think of fantasy realms or far off space or things that have a lot of magic involved when they think of world building. But I'm here to tell you it is just as important when thinking about and building and writing stories that are set in real places. Hi, I'm Jennifer Gregson, a tarot book coach and a young adult author who helps writers answer the tough questions so they can get over writer's block and get back to their novels and type the end with a smile on their face. So let's answer the question of what is world building first. To me, it's setting the stage for my characters, the actors, to play upon. And that can mean anything from their house, the city they live in, to far off magical space worlds. The young adult books that I write usually happen in real places. My first novel, The Art of Lying, which is available already on most major ebook stores, is set in New York City. I wrote it when I lived in Manhattan and I based it off of real places. My second book, which I'm very close to self-publishing, is set in my hometown of St. Louis. Actually a suburb of St. Louis, but I use a lot of St. Louis food. And the third book that I'm working on is set in the circus. Now, it's not an actual circus that's real, but circuses themselves are real, so it still applies. To make sure that these places ring true for your readers and ground them into the setting, you need to think of three things. I call these key landmarks, elementals, and character interactions. Number one, key landmarks. So in the case of my first book, The Art of Lying, Rachel is an artist who spends an awful lot of time in Union Square Park. That is an actual real place, a real place I used to go to, a real place that I went to when I was writing that book to get some observations around the people that were there and the kind of activities that happen. In my second book, it's all about the food of St. Louis. To me, that's what I miss the most about home, besides my friends that are still there. But I think of like Emo's Pizza, John Hamm, who's from St. Louis, knows what I'm talking about. So if some odd reason John Hamm watches this video, call me, we can talk. Um, also toasted ravioli. It's kind of the two big things that I think of when I think of St. Louis food. And for the circus, it's about sort of the proximity of where things are backstage as opposed to on stage or the circus tent. Those are the key landmarks. So how do you decide on these key landmarks? First, go to the characters themselves. What's important to them? Do they need coffee in the morning to get going? Do they have a specific route they take around the city or the place they live, like the circus? The one character always did the same sort of pre-show ritual. I needed to be able to show that. Um, what's important to your character? That's where I would start with. Besides just what about the characters, what does your story need? What does the conflict need? What does the main problem need for the story to have? That's where you sort of come up with those key landmarks, right? My first book, she's an artist. She takes a lot of pictures and then uses those pictures of people to create her large scale art. Um, my second book is set in high school. I needed to really get that high school setting, that suburban high school setting right. How they walk to and from home. Do they get a ride with their parents? Those kind of things needed to be important to the setting. For the circus book, like I've already said, she needs to be able to have her route. I need to know where the horses are, where the stable is, where the mess hall is. A lot of stuff happens there. And kind of what that main tent looks like. I needed to know those key landmarks to help ground my setting and my characters within that setting. Once you have these key landmarks, how do you find information? So you can look at maps pictures on the internet or pictures you've taken. You can go visit the places. Um, you can interview people. So I haven't been in a suburban high school in a very, very long time. So I interviewed some teacher friends that I have. Um, I talked to some parents of high school kids and sort of saw what happened with like spring musicals and baseball tryouts. Um, New York, I lived there. I did a lot of on-site things. I took a lot of pictures. I sat there and did a lot of things. With the circus, I used a lot of pictures online. I looked at maps and diagrams that I found. That's how you do that research. Two is what I call elementals. So this is sort of what year 
or what period is your book set in? Is it present day? Is it set in the 80s? Is it set in colonial times? Is it set even further back? What country are you in? Um, are you in the United States? Are you in Ireland? Um, where's Outlander set? I'm kind of thinking like that's a very historical book, right? Where are you in space and time within the globe? So if you're writing about a real place, it doesn't necessarily have to be a real place today. It could be a historical real place. Are you writing about the Lincoln assassination? I don't know. Um, but where are you in space and time? And then what season is it? It's going to make a difference to your characters. You need to know. So I wanted Rachel to be able to sit in the park and observe people. That's going to be a lot easier to do in spring and summer and fall than winter. You can do it, New York, we walk everywhere, but it's going to be easier on her to sit somewhere and for hours on end and take pictures or sketch. Um, in St. Louis, when is the musical being, like the auditions for the musical, when are those happening? When do they do the tryouts for baseball teams? I need to kind of know that. That's important elemental information. And then number three is character interaction. How does your character interact with the setting? Again, with New York, there's public transportation to think about or walking everywhere. The I didn't have her have a car. She needed to go to New Jersey a couple of times. She had to take a bus. What kind of situation? The kids in high school don't drive yet. They have to either bum rides with their older siblings, take a bus, walk, deal with their parents and carpool and with the circus how do they get from town to town and how does the small town circus sort of help or hinder the characters in that story conflict that's what i'm talking about with character interaction do your characters need to go over a mountain do they need to drive through the desert do they need to spend their last hundred dollars to buy a car to do any of those things is there rain? Is there snow? How does that affect how they get from A to B or how the story either stops, starts, or needs to move forward? These are things that you have to think about when you're world building real places. Does it snow? If your story is set in Las Vegas, yes, it has snow there, but it's super weird. So if it's snowing in your story, your characters need to be like, what's going on? This hardly ever happens. If you're in Hawaii and it snows, that'd be really, really weird, right? But if it's set in New York City in December, we get snow. It's not that big of a deal. We might grumble about it. We might complain, but we're going to move on. These are the kind of things you need to think about. So as you can see, yes, world building a totally different fantasy world or something in space Base where you're in complete control of everything is definitely more difficult and you have a lot more options, a lot more creative freedom, but it is just as important when you're writing about real places, real things, to get those specific details right, even if it's just like a small thing, to really ground your readers into the reality of your book. Because of that, I invite you to think about these things, to journal about them, interview your characters, find out how they like being where they are. Do they love where they live? Do they hate where they live? Are they just tolerating it because they're in high school and they can't move on their own? Are they loving circus life? Do they want to move on to white picket fence suburbia? What do your characters think about the setting you've placed them in and how does that help your story? I hope this has helped you. Let me know in the comments below if these somehow sparked some new ideas for you. And if you are writing fantasy, space, totally different, made up worlds, let me know and I will make a part two of this video helping you with tips and tricks to come up with those new world building sort of ideas. I hope that you can subscribe to this channel. I do videos every other week to help writers. And if you loved this, please hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos. I hope you have a great day.